We start tonight with breaking news from the city's west side. That's where we're getting reports of a shooting. Yeah, this is a live look right now from the scene on West Cesar Chavez Street near South Zarzamora. As we said, the initial call for this was a shooting. You can see San Antonio police are on the scene. Details very limited right now. Obviously, we have a crew there. We're working to get more information. Hope to bring it to you before this newscast is over. Now, in other news tonight, two people are in jail and two others are in the hospital after a shooting on the south side. It all started with an argument between two groups of people near an apartment complex on West Amber Street near Pleasanton Road. As one group was leaving, shots were fired towards their vehicle. Two people were hit inside and we're told the two people who were shot are expected to be OK, but police haven't yet told us the suspects names Now that shooting right there is just the latest in an unsettling trend. It's been a really busy week for law enforcement here in San Antonio. In case at 12 has reported nearly a dozen shootings, two of them involving police officers being shot at and returning fire at suspects. And a local judge tells the night teams Patty Santos that this isn't just a local problem. Monday, San Antonio police called to the fatal shooting of a beloved youth football coach outside a West Side apartment. Tuesday, police say a lover's quarrel led to the shooting of a man on South Cross. He was shooting from the driveway, firing at the police. Over on South Hackberry in Essex, SAPD officers shot a man who later died after he allegedly pulled out an AR-15 and fired rounds at officers. The man was wanted for an earlier shooting at a nearby car wash. I know that it's frustrating, but please do not take matters into your own hands like this. Wednesday, at Southeast Military and Goliath, police say the victim of a stolen truck with a tracker found the suspect and fatally shot him. In Halotus, a fight between two co-workers led to a shooting. On Zarzamora and Gillette, SAPD find themselves in another shootout with a suspect. Police say the suspect shot at officers. Thursday, a man and a woman were shot in separate incidents and an armored truck driver was allegedly held up at gunpoint by four masked men. We do know that crimes of violence are up. We do know that crimes of violence involving firearms is also up. Um, also, statistically, Texas leads the nation as it relates to gun thefts. Bear County 379th Criminal Court Judge Ron Ron Hell says rising crime trend is also a national problem. But he says the causes are beyond the control of the criminal system. The underlying causes of crime, homelessness, um, hunger, lack of insurance, um, the inability of folks to get community and family support, education. Add to that mental health issues. We used to see less than 50% of folks get arrested as a result of mental health disorders, and now that's much higher. He explains putting people in jail can't always be the answer. But the community and those in leadership, he says, are doing a better job about addressing those underlying issues, and that could help slow things down. If we don't deal now with the effects of mental health disorders, that that is going to continue to cause crime to rise. And he says, look, it's a different world, so it's going to take a different approach to deal with crime. Not only more money for jails, but also for programs, for clinicians and caseworkers. Steve, Stephania. Thank you, Patty. Want to take you to more breaking news right now. This is I-35 at Benz Engelman, an accident there. And if you look closely, you can see a vehicle hanging over the edge of that bridge. It's right near where that spotlight is by that fire engine. That vehicle was involved in this accident. And as you can see, part of it hanging over the bridge. We do not know if there's someone inside the vehicle or exactly what happened that led up to this. And obviously it's affecting a lot of traffic in that area. I mean, there are multiple, multiple police vehicles right there, also ambulances. But you can see that the people there that are all the way on the left lane, they're not going anywhere right now because there's such a bad uh, pileup. But again, we are keeping track of what's happening there with that accident. And we just need to know whether anybody um, is still in that view. Well, and if, if you notice both the bridge itself plus underneath closed because that vehicle is hanging so perilously off the edge of that bridge. Again, this is a live look 
35 and Ben Zingelman is the area we're talking about. All right, we're going to continue to watch the story and of course bring you any updates as they become available, but we're keeping an eye on this. In other news tonight, eight people are in jail and deadly drugs are off the streets tonight after a major drug bust in New Braunfels. Now, police there say that after raiding two homes, they recovered around 6,500 counterfeit Percocet pills and they were laced with fentanyl. Now, they'd be worth about $195,000 on the street. And that's not all they found because they also found about $22,000 in cash, a handgun, an assault rifle, marijuana edibles, and other narcotics. The suspects they, arrest, they arrested range in age from 17 to 39 years old. Now, speaking of fentanyl, there is so much that you should really know about the drug, how it affects your body, how you can get your hands on a life-saving treatment to stop somebody from overdosing. So just start simply with that QR code that's on your screen. Scan it with your phone, because once you do that, it'll direct you to our website where you're going to see a bunch of stories from our new series, Fighting Fentanyl. And last night, we told you he was on the run. Tonight, he is in jail. 19-year-old Mauricio Chavez Balderas facing charges for aggravated robbery. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says he is the man seen leaving a McDonald's restaurant on Wednesday after he robbed three teens inside. This is the surveillance we're talking about. Deputies found Balderas today at a hotel on Southwest Loop 410. And now an update to a story that we first brought to you on Wednesday on the night beat. That's when we told you about a deadly crash at a busy intersection. The police say a driver died after running a red light at the corner of Hildebrand and Howard. But as the night team's John Paul Barajas explains, people are worried that this situation could easily happen again. With each car that zooms by, those who live off Hildebrand and Howard worry there's an accident waiting to happen. It's certainly not at all suitable for the amount of traffic it carries. Sometimes it's one lane, sometimes it's two lanes, and sometimes people don't know what the heck they're doing when they're driving on it. Peter Hugo is the community traffic chair for the Monte Vista Historical Association. He says the intersection is known for crashes, speeding, close calls, and screeching tires as vehicles try to come to a stop. Those are all concerns from neighbor Pat DiGiovanni. It's about people's safety. It's about people's lives. And last night we lost one, could have lost more. And so how many, how many lives does it take before, you know, we take action, right? It seems like this one Wednesday night that have neighbors concerned. San Antonio police say the man driving this pickup truck was speeding when he ran a red light at Hildebrand and Howard, then crashed into a car. The people in the car survived, the pickup driver did not. A major concern is if I pull up to this light and stop where I'm supposed to, I have no line of sight. I can't see traffic coming left or right because properties are pushed up all the way under the road. They have high fence lines, trees, and utility poles. So I have to hope those I'm sharing the road with are abiding by the law. I don't ever go when the light turns green because I'm fairly sure somebody's going to do that on me, and they do. Neighbors' concerns have made it to District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo. He says the intersection's traffic lights have been delayed for a longer buffer between red and green. Public Works plans to install a crosswalk next month, and its staff will join Bravo for a meeting with residents next week. When I travel this road, I'm very, very careful, and I know a lot of my uh, fellow neighbors here uh, do the same thing. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Now today, a Bear County jury convicted a deputy U.S. Marshal of manslaughter, and it was over an accident that happened January of 2020 along 1604 and Babcock Road. Jonathan Jones was driving his pickup truck the wrong way when he crashed head on into a sedan and killed that 23 year old woman that you see on your screen. She was Taylor McCowan. The U.S. Marshals put Jones on administrative leave directly after the crash, but right now it is still up to the court to decide how long he's going to spend in prison. It was 28 years ago today that Tejano superstar Selena Quintanilla was tragically shot and killed in Corpus Christi by her former fan club manager. And on April 1st of 1995, KSAT's Jesse de Goyado visited Selena's recording studio and her hometown where she continues to be loved and missed. And while Selena may be gone, her legacy lives on through her music and the many, many, many murals painted in her honor throughout South Texas. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. It's tonight a show of support for the transgender community here in San Antonio. A rally at the Bear County Courthouse among events held around the world for the Transgender Day of Visibility. Those participating say they need the support now more than ever. Right now, what our community needs 
especially our younger generation, is hope. They need hope that we are there to fight these battles for them and that we're not giving up on our community and our young generation. We're here so we can all love one another, we can all be in this together and not fight each other because that's all we're trying to do is just give a space for everybody to be who they are. At today's rallies come as several states consider bills to restrict or ban gender affirming care for children. That includes a bill making its way through the Texas legislature. President Joe Biden also recognized the transgender day of visibility today. He called for an end to the attacks on transgender Americans. Blown out windows, toppled trees, demolished buildings as another tornado outbreak leaves a trail of damage from Arkansas to Iowa to Tennessee. See the devastation across America's heartland and who could be at risk tonight. And protecting schools, the potential safety measures some local school districts are considering and how the company behind it says it could help save lives. It's next on The Night Beat. Assault rifles and baseball bats, part of the sales pitch as a local school districts and private schools gather today to consider another tool in school security. This was the sales demonstration from a company called Armored One. The CEO showing the strength of the company's security film in glass and demonstrating how much harder it would be for an active shooter to get into a school campus. Now Texas school safety standards are going to be upgraded. They're expected to take effect later this spring. They will include a requirement for school's exterior glass doors to be able to resist a forced entry. In other news, at least three people have died in Arkansas after an outbreak of severe weather that spawned tornadoes across several states tonight. Little Rock especially hit hard with more than 50 people are reported to be hospitalized tonight. ABC's Melissa Adan shows us the new images of that devastation. Roger that. Advise me if I'm going to hit anything. Be my eyes, please. Be my eyes. Dramatic video of a tornado on the ground near Harper, Iowa tonight. Part of a tornado outbreak stretching through several states. Another reported tornado in Arkansas. The damage centered in West Little Rock, where both commercial buildings and homes have been destroyed. Cars have been flipped over, leaving down trees and power lines. I, mean, I'm, I thank God that I'm okay. People got severely injured. Wow, you can see it right there. The city of Little Rock urging residents to remain in their homes so emergency personnel can get to work. We had no idea that it would be this much damage that we're seeing right now. A state of emergency declared in Arkansas due to the severe weather signed by Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Most of you know we activated Arkansas's National Guard and we have approximately 100 guardsmen that are on the ground. Meteorologists at the ABC affiliate on the air in Little Rock reacting to the damage as they provided live reports. We have friends and family who have been affected by this, that um, homes have been destroyed. And so if there's hesitation, we're trying to keep our composure, too. While damaging hail and high winds also rip through parts of Illinois, while the current storm system moves east. Everything crosses the Mississippi over the next several hours. Chicago, you're going to get slammed with this in the early morning hours, getting through Atlanta, and then it goes into the northeast. ABC meteorologists urging people to have a safety plan in place, knowing you're near a shelter and being equipped with supplies. Melissa Don, ABC News, Los Angeles. Yeah, very rough afternoon up and down the midsection of the country. A big severe weather outbreak. And let's actually take a look at the multiple tornado reports. So far, the Storm Prediction Center today has received 55 tornado reports. You see a lot of them concentrated around Arkansas, up into Memphis, and even northwestern Mississippi. Then you head northward all throughout parts of Illinois, eastern Iowa, and southern Wisconsin. But that's just part of the story. Those are just the tornado reports. Take account for the large hail. Now, these are reports of hail one inch in diameter or larger. So the damaging size hail. And you see how widespread that is. Actually, over 246 reports of large hail. Now, sometimes those reports are of the same tornado or of the same hail, hail core. But it just shows you how widespread that activity was. Now, classic spring system, too, with the severe weather along the cold front and snow 
Heavy snow wrapping around the backside of this indicated by these blue colors on the screen from Minneapolis to Huron, Huron down to North Platte as well. And actually we're on the tail end of this cold front that's helping to kickstart all that severe weather. But for us, it's just changing our dew points and our humidity a bit. You look at the dew points, there's a huge difference in how it feels out there from just the north side of San Antonio at the airport, 64 degree dew point to Bernie with a 41 degree dew point. Comfort 27, Lost Maples 23. Huge drop off in that moisture content, dry air off to the northwest. This cold front will slowly, the tail end of it, will slowly work its way southward overnight tonight. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., you're not going to notice the humidity in the air. It's actually going to be a beautiful and lovely morning. That front stalls down to the south of us. Dimmit, LaSalle, McMullen counties, that's where we could have a few showers along that boundary tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, low humidity, 58 degrees in the morning, 82 at noon, and then 86 in sunshine tomorrow afternoon. And for the most part, we're just looking at mid 80s. Castroville, 87, 85 in Converse, Lavernia, 86, Bernie and Leon Springs, 84 degrees. Very similar on Sunday, mid 80s, but next week record challenging warmth. By Monday, we're at 93. Tuesday, we're up to 95. The record that day? 93. So yes, we are predicting a record, but then a huge drop off with another cold front, a noticeable cold front, likely dropping our temperatures down into the mid 70s to mid 60s for the middle and end of next week. So big changes on the horizon. As for rain chances, they're looking better. And tomorrow, 10% chance south of town Sunday, 20% chance a few pop up afternoon storms are possible, but I don't think that likely Sunday afternoon. So minimal chances all the way through Wednesday, but Thursday with this pattern shift and that cooler air moving in, it would favor scattered to widespread areas of rain. Again, that would be on Thursday and Friday of next week, and we could actually have some meaningful rain at that time as well. Of course, there's a lot of a lot of time between now and then, so we will be modifying and tweaking the forecast and keep che checking back in and we'll keep you updated. Otherwise, we have our live cam shot outside where our sky is clearing out a little bit. Temperature 73 degrees here in town and it's all quiet. We're lucky to have this picture considering what's going on in other parts of the country. Yeah, definitely. Let's count our blessings. Thank you so much, Adam. All right, let's turn to golf right now. And there's a big tournament in town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're just happy they got it off as scheduled today, Larry. Yeah, and it's still running behind, though, because the first round was delayed yeah. by nearly three and a half hours. So the second round is not complete. It almost got in, though. And Patrick Rogers is your leader, and he is chasing a special invite as well. And today we talk with the mission's new skipper coming up. I'm lucky I'm not carrying my bag, that's that's for sure. Uh, so props to my caddy, Nick. But uh, no, it's uh, I, I feel like that this is part of the reason why I, I've always cared so much about fitness and I, I, I feel as fresh now as I did to start the day, which is great. Having to finish round one and two is all in a day's work for the Texas Open leader in big board sports. Spurs are playing at the Warriors, 9 p.m. tip local time, and Keldon Johnson was back for the Spurs after sitting out the last two games. First quarter, Mamu down low. Well, he has nowhere to go, so he feeds Malachi Branham, slam dunk, 13-6 Spurs. San Antonio led 26-23 after one. Golden State didn't make a three in the first quarter, missing all 10 tries. Second quarter, Trey Jones, Akita Bates, D up, easy slam, 30-27 SA. Malachi now for three, no good. Mamu gets the offensive board and puts it back. It's 37-34 Spurs. Golden State started to make threes, and they led 54-51 at halftime. Let's check out the score now, and it's 59-55 Warriors in the third. The Spurs are trying to snap a five-game slide. Former Stanford golf standout Patrick Rogers, a 36 holes from his first PGA Tour win and a major invite. Today, he shot a 5 under 67 during the second round of the Valero Texas Open at TPC San Antonio. His tee shot on the par 3 16th hole was money, and he made his birdie putt. Then on the par 4 17th, he'd find birdie again. Rogers picked the right time to get hot on the back nine with birdies on five of the last six holes, including the par 518th. I mean, that hole's a monster. He hit the clubhouse at 11 under par. Now, 2017 VTO champion Corey Connors is three shots off the pace after an even par 72 today. The final spot at the Masters awaits the Valero Texas Open winner if he's not already eligible. Rogers is not, but that could change very soon. 
Yeah, it was nice. I was able to, with playing 23 holes today, to keep some momentum going, carry some momentum from the start this morning uh, into the second round. And uh, yeah, really happy with where my game is. Um, I was really sharp tee to green and gave myself a lot of opportunities to score. I uh, just have a, you know, especially after winning, have a you know, really high comfort level with uh, this place and feel like I... Uh, you know, see the shots well, and um, certainly know uh, where you can miss it in certain situations, and that uh, seemed to be helpful. Here's your second round leaderboard, which isn't finished. Play was suspended due to darkness. Rogers sit at 11 under par, 133. Connors and Diaz are three shots behind. As for some notables, Jimmy Walker is tied for 34th at minus two, and fan fave Ricky Fowler is one under after 36 holes. The third round of the UIL Class 6A girls soccer playoffs kicked off at Gustafson Stadium. Taft playing Warren. No score in the 13th minute when Bella Galan settles down a back pass, puts a shot on goal that just sneaks past the outstretched arms of the keeper for a 1-0 lead. The Raiders are heading to the regional semis with a 4-1 victory. Great third round battle at Comalander Stadium. Lee Boys taking on Johnson. Jaguars draw a penalty kick in the 66th minute. Diego Robles buries it in the back of the net. Johnson draws level with 15 minutes left in regulation, but the Vols answer back four minutes later, cross in front of the goal for substitute Lucas Saldana, and he just puts it past the keeper. Saldana adds another goal two minutes later. Those are his only his second and third goals of the season. Awesome. Lee is heading back to the regional semifinals with a 4-1 win. My right winger just played me into the space and I just took off. I saw a chance and I took it. I think as a team, we really pulled through on this game. And I couldn't have done it without the team. Lee will next face Brownsville Rivera in the regional semis next Friday at 5 p.m. San Antonio Missions Media Day after the break. Welcome back. The new sod is down at Wolf Stadium, and it's almost time for the San Antonio Missions to play ball. Luke Montz will serve as the Missions manager this season after previously managing single A Salem and short season Lowell in the Red Sox organization. The Missions roster consists of 30 players, highlighted by 15 returners from the 2022 season, including reigning Texas League batting champion Connor Hollis. Founded in 1888, the Texas League has been a stepping stone for many baseball greats. Today at Missions Media Day, we asked Skipper his thoughts about managing in a very historic historic league. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, um, I think it's probably one of three leagues that I might have missed in my career. The more that I get to hear about this league is might be one of the best leagues in baseball. You know, I never as a player, I, I didn't look around to see what other leagues were going on. But the Texas League has a lot of history. The San Antonio Missions have a lot of history. This has been around here for forever, and I learned that last night, and it's, it's very cool to hear that. But, you know, going to places like Frisco have been around forever. The Corpus in there, uh, Midland. I played two years with Oakland, never went to that Midland club. But even the new teams that are coming in, Wichita and the new stadium in Amarillo, um, you know, very excited to be here, but I'm very excited to see the whole league as we go through and about. Missions will start the season on the road, and their home opener is set for Tuesday, April 11th with Frisco. All right. Bring on baseball. Yes. By the way, the Astros won tonight. Aww. They beat the White Sox. They beat the White Sox. Yeah. You okay. Happy well, you're handling it. Fine. I'm fine. And we'll happy right baseball's back. back. Before we go, as promised, we have updates to uh, first we're going to start with that shooting incident that we brought to you at the beginning of the show on West Cesar Chavez Street. Now we've learned that a 23 year old man was shot in the back and also his knee. He was taken to the hospital. His condition not known tonight at this time. No arrests have been made. Police say they are looking for three suspects tonight. All right, let's go over to another, I mean, terrifying accident that was on I-35 in Ben Zingelman. It's actually happening right now. We have Sky 12 there where you can see that vehicle or whatever that vehicle is, if it's a pickup or an SUV, it's still dangling. Yeah, it, 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 it looks like it's a pickup truck. And it, it, at one point, it looked like almost three wheels were off the bridge itself. They certainly were on the pavement. They have a tow truck there carefully trying to bring it back onto the bridge itself and kind of clear this area. I-35 at Ben Zingelman. Uh, the last report we had, this has not been confirmed, is that there were two people that were inside the truck and they were transported, right. which is good news that I mean, it appears as if they're going to be okay. Yeah, fingers crossed. Adam? Rain chance is ramping up by next Thursday. We'll keep you updated as uh, we modify the forecast. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much for keeping us company and have a beautiful weekend. Good night.